dwarf fruit. It is Proust's courtesy to spare the reader the embarrassment of believing himself cleverer than the author. In the 19th century, the Germans painted their dream and the outcome was invariably vegetable. The French needed only to paint a vegetable and it was already a dream. In Anglo-Saxon countries, the prostitutes looks at, look as if they pervade, along with sin, the attendant pains of hell. Beauty of the American landscape, that even the smallest of its segments is inscribed as its expression with the immensity of the whole country. In the recollection of emigration, each German venison roast tastes as if it had been felled with the charmed bullets of the Freitschitz. In psychoanalysis, nothing is true except the exaggerations. We can tell whether we are happy by the sound of the wind. It warns the unhappy man of the fragility of his house, hounding him from shallow sleep and violent dreams. To the happy man, it is the song of his protectedness. Its furious howling concedes that it has power over him no longer. The noiseless din that we have long known in dreams booms at us in waking hours from newspaper headlines. The mythical messenger of doom relives in radio. Important events announced peremptorily are always disasters. In English, solemn means most ceremonious and menacing. The power of society behind the speaker turns of its own accord against the listeners. The recent past always presents itself as if destroyed by catastrophes. The expression of history and things is no other than that of past torment. In Hegel, self-consciousness was the truth of the certainty of oneself, in the words of the phenomenology, the native realm of truth. When they had ceased to understand this, the bourgeois were self-conscious at least in their pride at owning wealth. Today, self-consciousness no longer means anything but reflection on the ego as embarrassment, as realization of impotence, knowing that one is nothing. In many people, it is already an impertinence to say I, the splinter in your eye is the best magnifying glass. The basest person is capable of perceiving the weaknesses of the greatest, the most stupid, the errors in the thought of the most intelligent. The first and only principle of sexual ethics, the accuser is always in the wrong. The whole is the false.